Hello everyone and welcome to another Daily Dose of Drupal. Today we're on episode number 226 and we're going to be continuing a little bit where we left off in the last episode and we're going to be doing some stuff with Drupal console. So if you remember in the last episode we were talking about how to generate a module with Drupal console. We're going to do that again today but if you went back two episodes ago I believe we talked about the ECK module and how that can be used to build custom entities. So what we're doing today is we're going to take Drupal console and we're going to generate a module and create our own custom entity with module code. So it's a really cool way to get some basic experience with how modules work. You're going to look at some code. If you're familiar with Drupal 8 modules, it's going to make sense. If you're not, it's going to be confusing, but that's okay because you don't really need to edit too much code to get this to actually work. So it's really a nice way to kind of be introduced to how a Drupal 8 module is structured. So you can go to drupalconsole.com to learn more about how to get this installed. Again, you can use Composer just to install it in your project. And this is going to let you run the Drupal command to generate a module. Now we're going to look at actually running the command to create our new module. And in this module, we're going to add an entity or a custom, uh, a custom content entity. So remember, we can run the, just the Drupal command. So I'm going to prefix all my commands with Lando. Depending on how you install Drupal console, you probably are just going to run just Drupal. But Lando Drupal, and it's going to give me a list of all the available Drupal console commands. And you will notice this is very similar to Drush if you use that in the past. There's a lot of overlap between the two but uh, there are some distinct differences and I you know, actually use both quite frequently. So if we go here, we're gonna look for the generate and we're gonna generate a module and then we're also going to generate a content entity. So these are the two we're gonna be generating but we need to start with creating the module. So Lando Drupal generate module, just like that. And when we run it, it's going to ask us a bunch of questions and we'll just fill it out. So I'm going to create a module called Code Karate Stats. I'm going to leave the machine name the default. The module path can stay in modules custom. That's fine. For description, I'll do statistics for Code Karate. The package name can be Code Karate. The core version is eight. Do we want to generate a module file? Sure, let's go ahead and do that. We don't want it to be defined as a feature. Do we want to add a composer.json? I'm not going to do that. It's just an extra file we don't necessarily need. Do you want to add any module dependencies? In this case, the module is not going to depend on anything else right now, so I'll go no. We can allow a unit test class. Testing is always good. Do you want to generate a themable template? No, it's just a blank template. We don't need that. And do you want to proceed? Yes. And you'll see it creates some files here. So we actually created our module. Good, that's easy. We did that last time. Now we want to actually create a custom entity to store these statistics. So if you remember a few episodes ago on the ECK module, we created a custom entity using ECK. Now we're going to create it using Drupal console. So the command is going to be that Drupal generate entity content command. So I'm going to use Lando first, of course, generate entity content because we want it to be a content entity in Drupal. You have content entity and config entities. So content entities are things that typically store content kind of makes sense. Config entities are more configuration. So we want this a statistic is going to be content that we may decide to display in a view. We may want users to be able to see it on a page. So we're going to make it a content entity. And so now it's going to first ask me once this loads, what module I want to add this entity to. So I'm going to start typing. You can see it auto fills or auto completes. I'm going to just tab over, hit enter. We can enter the class of our new content entity. I'll just call it statistic. The machine name can stay what it defaults to, which is statistic. Enter the label, that's fine, just leaving it as statistic, but you could change that if you needed to. You get to select the base path for the routes. 
Sometimes you might want this under the content listing rather than the structure listing admin menu, but we'll leave it at structure for now. Just know I could change that if I wanted it to show up under the content menu. So do you want this content entity to have bundles? We're gonna to try to keep it as simple as possible. So we're gonna go no, we don't want it to be um, have bundles. We will allow it to be translatable and we will allow it to be revisionable. Do you want it to have forms? Yes, we do. And do we want it to have an owner? So do we want to basically have an author or a creator for that content? Yes, we will have someone for that. And you can see this created a whole bunch of files. Now, one important thing here, there is a small bug in Drupal console right now. It's being fixed. I've already uh, talked to one of the maintainers, but if you install this module using this specific version of Drupal console, there's going to be a bug, it's going to crash. So we're gonna actually pull up the code and take a look at everything it generated. So if you look here under Code Karate Stats, you're gonna see a ton of files. And this is gonna be a little overwhelming if you're not familiar with Drupal modules. Just keep in mind, we really don't have to do, to do too much here. But the important one that we're gonna look at is this source entity statistic.php. And way at the top, you're gonna to notice that if you are using an editor, it's gonna show you that there's an issue. So line seven is just missing a semicolon, just a small issue, mistake, easy fix. That's, I guess, one of the issues with code generation tools, right? It's not, you know, it can't always be perfect, but this is this, in this case, it's an easy fix. And so it generated all of this code for you. So we saved it. We're gonna turn this module on and check it out. And then we're gonna uninstall it and add some more to it. So first, let's go ahead and turn this module on. I'm just gonna use Drush. You could use Drupal console as well, but I like Drush for turning modules on and off. Do I want to continue? Yes. And then I'll go back to the site. You can see these are all the different permissions that it does allow you to use. So if we go back to our site and I refresh this page, you're gonna see under the structure menu, there's now a statistic settings and a statistic list. Under statistic settings, there's a um, configuration form. So this is a settings form that you could create if we had additional settings for our statistic entities. This form lives under source form statistic settings form. So you can see right now it's going to you know, build the form here. Here's the markup for that uh, little bit of text. We could add additional form elements. So if you needed to track specific information or specific settings for your entity, there's already a form set up for you. If you don't need it, you can just leave it, uh, but it is there. The cool thing about this is you can manage fields just like you can with any other entity. So I could start adding fields using the uh, admin interface and I, I could be done. I could create my custom entity and then just use the admin interface and my entity is gonna work exactly like you'd expect. You can manage the fields, the form display, and the display just like you can with content types. However, in this case, rather than using the UI, I'd rather add because we only have I'm only going to be adding one field to this entity I'd rather just do it in the code itself so I'm going to uninstall this module and we're going to add this field so I'm going to uninstall and then I'm going to go and just add one simple field just to show you how it works so let's look through this code just a little bit. The statistic file is where it actually talks about how the entity is going to be set up in the database. So when it's installed, it's going to use this base field definitions to determine how that entity is actually structured. So this is a very important file. There's some files here for in, in the form sections for the actual form itself that's creating entities. If you're deleting entities, you have things for revisions and you can see revisions adds a lot of extra files the settings form that we already talked about 
the access control handler is uh, to checks your access. That's where the permissions come in. A list builder, we'll go through that in a second. That's what actually builds the list of entities. So when you want to see all the statistics you've created, there's that list, you can edit that. And you might be wondering, why wouldn't I just use views? Well, you can, you don't have to necessarily use this, but it's, it's already there, it makes it easy. Um, it provides very sensible defaults for defining your own content entities. The other thing let's look at, so let's look down here. You can see there's a menu. So these are the statistic list and the statistic settings page that we looked at. This is just a YAML file providing configuration options. And there's the permissions that it, remember when I installed it with Drush, it told me all the different permissions. These are all defined here. So feel free to take some time looking through this code. It's a lot to take in if you're not that familiar with it. But if you go through it and, uh, and you are familiar with PHP, it's going to start to make start to make sense as you look at it. And as you click around on the site, you can see how some of it's structured back here. So it's a good way to learn. Uh, but we're not going to, you know, that could take hours to go through all of it and really dive in. We're not going to worry about that. Let's go back to our statistic.php file. And we're going to look here. So first there's a user ID field. Then there's a name field. I'm just going to copy this name field and put it right below. Missed dollar sign there. And I'm going to call this value because each statistic is going to have some kind of value. I could make this a decimal field or um, an integer field or a float field. Most likely I'd make it a decimal, but I'm going to actually keep it a string because I want to be able to put some text behind it. Um, I could separate this into two fields. You'll see why it's just easier for me to do it in one. I'm just going to change a few things. So we're going to set the label to value, the value of the statistic entity. All this other stuff can stay the same. So what it's saying is, you know, here's the label, here's the description. Do we want it to be revisionable? Yes. What's the max length we want? What kind of text processing or input format type do we want on here? The default value. So in the essentially when you can think of this as the defaults when you go to the manage display, so you're viewing it, we want the label to be above, it's a string, and the weight is the actual ordering on that page. When you're doing, if you would go to the manage form display, we want it to be a text field with this weight. Do we want it to be configurable on the form? Yes. So that means it's going to show up under manage display or manage form display. And do we want it to be configurable under manage display? We want that to be yes or true as well. And do we want it to be required? Yes. So it kind of makes sense. Um, some of this can be confusing if you are trying to create other fields. If you just search for base field definition create, it's going to tell you um, on that page, I believe there's some information about what fields you can actually create here. But things like strings, in integers, decimals, uh, they work. So let's save this and we're going to reinstall that module. Just go ahead and reinstall that. And once it's there, we're going to refresh this page. So you can see under manage form display, there's now a value field here. So I can reorder this because we said that under that form setting, it was true. We wanted it to be configurable. So all this stuff is editable, just like you normally would with a field, but I didn't have to create it under manage fields. Now it's just there because if you were going to send this module to someone else, you want them to be able to add on to your entity, but you might have some fields that have to come with it, right? And one of those fields might, for a statistic, would be some kind of value. So you can see how it would make sense to kind of bundle that in with your entity rather than just uh, doing it through the UI. So the other thing we're going to come look at is under structure, statistic list. It says there are no statistic entities yet. Let's go ahead and add one. So we have our name. We're going to say, hey, this is a stat for the number of Code Karate videos. We're going to say 250 videos, which is probably about right. Actually, it's probably 300. 
if we wanted to make a, re a specific revision message, we could. Here's who it's authored by. We save it. You can see that now it's created. This is controlled by the manage display. So if I wanted to not show this value, if I wanted to not show the author, like those are things that you can change just on that manage display, just like you normally would with a with any kind of content type or any kind of entity. You can see it shows up here. Let's add another statistic. I'll call it code karate YouTube views. 2.5 million. And we could do that. Save. Whoops. Save there. And now we have that entity created. You can see now under this statistic entity list or statistic list menu item, it lists all these entities. So this view right here, that's what's getting created by this uh, list builder. So you can see the statistic ID, the name. So ideally what we'd probably do is we'd add our value to this as well. So we'd add the value here. We'd have to add an item here to get that value, which means we'd probably go back into statistic and add some helper functions or helper uh, methods. But that's a little, that would take a little bit too long for today. We're gonna stop there. That's it for this time on the Daily Dose of Drupal. Today you learned how to create your own custom content entities using Drupal Console. So if you've never created a Drupal module before, this is a really good way to get started to see some of the complex code that gets created. But just keep in mind that there's a lot of files. That's why using Drupal Console is helpful because it helps you scaffold out or generate a lot of those uh, files quickly without you having to know and build out each file manually. So go ahead and make sure you are following me on Twitter at smthomas3. Make sure you subscribe to the newsletter at codekarate.com. Make sure you're subscribed on YouTube by clicking that subscribe button. And we'll see you next time. Goodbye.